St. Patrick's. Our first hymn this morning is hymn 484. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
but they covered their ears and with a loud shout, shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a long, loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5 and 15 to 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. The Word of God. Our second reading is from the first book of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him a living stone. Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may acclaim and proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous sight. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, blessed be his name. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Our gospel this morning is known as the Farewell Discourse. It is the words of Jesus at the time of the Last Supper when he instituted the Eucharist, the sacrament of the Eucharist. He is with the disciples for the last time and he is giving them what he hopes will be comfortable words. He is trying to teach them that even though he must leave them, that he is destined to suffer a terrible death and to be gone from them, that he still will always be with them. He is encouraging them to take heart and to not feel that they are being abandoned or that they will be without him even though he will, for a time, be gone from them through death. The disciples are terrified because following Jesus up until the time he entered Jerusalem had been a fairly enjoyable experience. They had left their livelihoods and had agreed to follow Jesus because they were so inspired by his words and his healings, his deeds. And they had a life of wandering through Israel, addressing great crowds, and being a part of a movement, a movement that was one of inspiration and bringing life in the midst of suffering and death. They were excited by the call that they had received and through the power that Jesus had to bring wholeness and safety into this world. But when they were called by him to go into Jerusalem, suddenly all of the fun that they were having, all the comforts they were experiencing were taken away. Suddenly they knew Jesus would be gone from them and that they themselves would be in danger of being put to death. At the time of this farewell discourse, Judas had already left to betray Jesus and Peter would soon deny that he knew Jesus. The disciples were beginning to disintegrate as a group of people who were safe with Jesus. They did not know what the future would hold. We hear again from the doubting Thomas when Jesus says that he is the way to God. Thomas says, show us the way. 
And Jesus said, I am the way. And Philip says, if you are the way to God, then show us God and we will be satisfied. And then Jesus said, have I not shown you already that I am God? Through my teachings and through my healings, has God not revealed that he is in me and that I am the way to God and to eternal life? This is not only the moment when Jesus institutes the sacrament of the Eucharist during this farewell discourse. It is also the time when he founds the church. He tells the disciples that whatever they do in the future to further Jesus' teachings and beliefs, that they will be empowered by him to be successful in what they are doing. Whatever they ask Jesus to help them do, if it is in accord with the Father's wishes, he will be with them and they will succeed. He explains that he and the Father are one, that to know God is to know the way through Jesus to God. Jesus is the way, the life, the hope, and the truth. Let's look a minute at what we are being told in this gospel. We know that Jesus lived, that he walked the earth, that he did marvelous healings, that he taught the truth. So many of his teachings are useful to us even now, today, to love our neighbors. To love our neighbors brings us into harmony with others and enables us to live in peace. To love God instills us with values of kindness, of sacrifice, of searching, and of joy. All these things are wonderful gifts that make our lives individually and as a community greater. If we are inspired by the words and deeds of this human being who was also God who walked the earth, then we find the way to God and to eternal life. None of us were alive when Abraham Lincoln walked the earth, yet we are still inspired by his words. In his memorial is a section from his second inaugural address which quotes the prophet Isaiah. He was a man of great speaking ability. The Gettysburg Address is memorized by many school children. He saved our country. He did many great things to make it possible for us to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today as a nation and as a people. Yet we didn't see him. We didn't talk with him. We only know of him through his words and his deeds. But they live on and inspire us and still make our country great. This is what Jesus has given us, this same truth and life. Just as Abraham Lincoln was the way to keeping our country great, so Jesus is the way to knowing God. His healings are revelations of God's power in the world and of God's speaking through his created son. Jesus' teachings enable us to live, live a better life, to know freedom and joy and community. These things are valuable and worthy even in today's world. And so the disciples were afraid that they were to lose Jesus, that they would be left adrift and alone and in danger of death. But Jesus reminded them that he would always be with them and that he would guide them to eternal life. And so it is with each one of us who believe through faith in the words and actions of Jesus Christ we too will be led on the path to God and to eternal life. Let us bow our heads in prayer.
Heavenly Father, be with us this day. Please take away our fear and our loneliness and our separation from one another. Help us to once again find community in our faith in you. Help us to restore our world that we may live in peace and harmony and good health and continue to do all that you have asked us to do in your name. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We send special greetings on this Mother's Day to all mothers, and we wish you a happy day and the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living in truth, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. disobedience took us far from you you did not abandon us to the power of death in your mercy you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you again and again you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation father you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our savior incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. And the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your 
Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of your eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Patrick and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the Lord. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. and serve the Lord.
Thank <laughs> you.